Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block Politics Perspectives and Players. The Green Party of Canada has elected a brand new leader today, Anna Mee Paul. She made history yesterday as the first black woman elected to lead a major federal political party. And she joins me now. Welcome to the show, Anna Mee, and congratulations on your win. Thank you so much. It's just a pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, Ms. Paul, your win, a historic win. Where do you think the Green Party needs to go to be able to win a substantial number of seats in Canada? Uh, my job is to help us connect with people in Canada because we have been heading in the right direction for a very long time. Uh, and it's just time to, to make that link uh, with people in Canada uh, in terms of uh, who they're choosing to vote for. We are the party that has been talking about the, the policies that had they been in place when the pandemic hit would have made all the difference in the world. And so I'm thinking of universal pharmacare. I'm thinking of our demands for reform in long-term care. I'm thinking of guaranteed livable income. And so, you know, we, we, we're on the right track. It's just a question of uh, bringing more Canadians along with us. Ms. Paul, what do you think needs to happen with the Green Party to become, I guess, more of a mainstream choice for Canadians? There was a lot of predictions ahead of the last election that the Greens were going to take a number of seats. That failed to materialize. What will you do differently than the last leader, Ms. May? Well, we know from the polls that were taken just after the election that more than a third of people in Canada chose to vote strategically. Uh, we also know that more than a third of people in Canada have said that they would consider voting green, and we are most often the second choice of most people in Canada who vote. And so we need to be giving people in Canada more reasons to vote for something as opposed to against something. Uh, I believe that, uh, that this moment that we're living through, this, uh, the urgency of the pandemic and the urgency of the climate crisis, are really issues that Canadians are starting uh, to... Um, to say to themselves, we, we don't want to go back, and if we don't want to go back, we know we need something different. And I, my suggestion to them is to take a very strong good look at the Green Party and the policies that we've been talking about. Green parties all around the world make their breakthroughs at moments like this when people are just ready for something different, something better. You are already signed up to run in a by-election. Of course, as the leader, you eventually want to have a seat in the House of Commons. You're going to be running in Bill Morneau's old riding. Um, do you think you have a chance of winning there? Because you didn't take a, a large percentage of the vote last time, although, of course, you were not the leader of the Green Party at that point. Well, that's true, and I'm hoping that that is an advantage. You know, One of the things uh, that the Liberals always did was to bring in the star candidate that normally went into cabinet. And of course, that's very, it can be very attractive uh, for residents, even though it didn't produce any of the outcomes that people in Toronto Centre uh, deserved and should have expected, given how senior their, uh, their MP's uh, representation has been. Uh, so in my case, I'm running for the same reasons that I ran less than a year ago in Toronto Centre, which is to make sure that people in Toronto Centre have the option of real representation. You know, and I do believe again that we are, we're not where we were before. We're not where we were six months ago. We are in the midst of a pandemic that has hit Toronto Centre particularly hard. And people there, I believe, will be looking for the representation that is actually going to bring the urgent help that they need. And so, yes, I'm, I'm going to be running to win in that seat. Your win is a historic win, and there's a lot of discussion right now in Canada about anti-black racism, about the need to have more diversity, more voices in politics. What would you like to see happening in Canadian politics to be more inclusive and to reach out so that we have a political system that actually represents Canadians? Well, there's no shortage, and we are so fortunate in Canada um, that we have been able to attract uh, the best talent, uh, the best minds from all over the world. We have, we, we're one of the most successful countries in doing that. And so it's even more of a reason that it's a shame when that uh, diversity is not represented in our public policy. We know that the best ideas can come from everywhere and, uh, and anywhere. And so if we're cutting ourselves off 
from that diversity, then we're just losing out uh, in terms of the kind of policy that we're, we're developing. And so I'm just encouraging every single person in Canada to be the eyes and ears or talent in their community. There are many outstanding people from underrepresented groups that just don't see themselves reflected in politics, and so they don't consider it. And so tell them, tell them when you see that talent, we're interested, we think that you should run. And when you do, we're going to support you and we're going to vote for you. And there's no question that electing someone like me, the Greens choosing, uh, our members choosing someone like me, already that's a very powerful symbol for people who had not seen themselves reflected. And I'm very proud of that. Ms. Paul, and you, I thank are, her <laughs> you are only the second Jewish person to lead a, a major federal political party in Canada. I know you experienced anti-Semitism on the campaign trail. Are you concerned about anti-Semitism in the Green Party? I'm concerned about anti-Semitism in general. Uh, there's still definitely some work to do. There's, there's no question that, uh, that the race was an eye-opener. Uh, I can't attribute, I can't attribute uh, all of the comments at all to our membership. I know that every single political party uh, has, uh, has work to do in making sure that they're truly inclusive, making sure that, uh, that the voices within their party are people, the voices of people that absolutely uh, um, adhere to their values. And so there is no place in the Green Party of Canada for anti-Semitism, and there never will be. Um, and I, I would say that I hope that all of the political parties uh, feel that way. And I will also encourage every single person in Canada, whether it's anti-Semitism or anti-Black racism or anti-Indigenous racism, when they see it, speak out. Because silence emboldens the hate, and that's what we need to make sure we stamp out. Ms. Paul, thank you so much for joining us today, and congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Hope to come back soon.